Cheers, Luke. Look where we are. Yeah, we're in Rula Bula. <laughs> this place is, it's for real. It, it's all I real. didn't just make it up. This part at least is not fictional. So where's Jesus? Well, <laughs> he would he, be sitting over he there, He was at the he? bar, yeah. He Drinking was at the tequila. bar. Yeah, well, uh, Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey. Yes, you, you, you don't buy, uh, oh, you don't buy Jesus scotch. Of beer. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. There we go. Yeah, we're all set. <laughs> So, congratulations. Thank you, and well, thank you for being here. We've made it. Yes. And we, we're the, still here, yeah, nine they, books later. Yeah, thanks for doing all the books, they and did. like the novellas and short stories and all the stuff. I know, it was my think. pleasure. I still remember the first time, very first book hounded, I was maybe a year or two into my recording career, so I was really greenhorn, and the casting director came to me and she had this kind of like look on her face, like she had a little secret, and she was like, so I have this book, and she had like this whole, and I immediately being like, what's, what's in store? And she's like, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, I think it's gonna be really big. And she knew, like this was before it was even released, so this was like way ahead. She had the providence to know, I think this is gonna be a big deal. It's getting a lot of kind of buzz and stuff. I think you should read it. And so she gave it to me, and that's how it started for me. I remember reading it and being like, there's nothing like anything I've read yet. Um, so that kind of started opening my eyes to like, the joy of what we could do as mm -hmm. far as taking your work and then translating it into the audio and finding a whole new audience of uh, listeners and readers and kind of smushing them together in a general smorgasbord of fandom. <laughs> when I first got hounded as an audio book from you and, and, and I was listening to it, I was like, this is amazing. I was, I was giggling and I'm like, these are my own jokes. Uh -huh. and, and so that, that's the part that really made me realize, okay, this is something different because yeah. I, I shouldn't be laughing at my own jokes when I know they're coming. It was right, your delivery right, right. that made the difference. Right. And, and I'm like, this is a completely different, uh, you know, it's well, viable. I remember it's, you it's, saying yeah. that right away that you liked that it was a different take than yeah. how you would hear it. And I think a lot of people wonder about that, like what does the author think when he makes a choice to do a character in a certain way and it may not be what you originally thought of. Mm -hmm. And you were always very generous about whatever you wanna do, make the choice, it's your choice, you're the one that's doing the reading. So you gave me that freedom, but you would also give me such good uh, help as far as doing the homework of like, okay, so you've got, 18 stanzas of uh, Polish poetry. I will go out of my way and get you some pronunciations and help you out. But then I would also start to mess with you yeah. a little bit. Oh, I know. Yeah, and I'd warn you I and I'd go, ha ha ha. Yes, because I could have picked, I, I could have picked <laughs> any city in Poland for Graniuel to run to, but I picked the one that was all consonants. Yeah, right. And, and so, yeah, that was a lot of fun to yeah. do stuff like Throw that. Throw a little something at me and yeah. see, see but, how I do. Yeah. That's good, that's yeah, good. It was fun to mess with you in that regard. But. And I would notice it too as I would be reading, there'd be little things like, it'd be like dialogue and then be like, he said, not too forcefully. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, so he wants me to be a little more subtle with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just little things like that, yeah. you know. Because but they're so helpful, and I think as a, a writer, that must be an interesting headspace to work from, because usually you're just working from, they're going to be reading it, instead of having to think also, well, they're going to be reading it, and then some people are going to listen to it. So you're actually writing in two different mediums at the same time. So Luke, I want to ask you, Yes. when you get my manuscript in front of you and you have to start recording this thing and you've got a new character, yeah. how do you come up with the voice for that character? For example, I'm, I, the one that I've always wondered uh, about is the Morrigan, mm -hmm. because here's a goddess of death, right? right? Who, and uh, the battle crow, who yeah. choose, a chooser of the slain. Right. So she comes Dire. out. Dire, yeah, serious. Extremely. Right. Now, at the same time, she also has a seductive nature to her as well. She walks around Starkers all the time. She's naked and just like, what's up? It's very that, sexual. That is true. Yeah. It, well, in our modern culture, it's, it's very sexual. To the pagan Irish, this was actually a point I was making. Everybody's naked all the time because they didn't really care. It wasn't sexualized it, as much. It, yeah, it wasn't as sexualized as much back then. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, so, so anyway, the Morrigan, when mm -hmm. you're doing her voice, mm -hmm. How did you come up with that? Because I gave no clues to that except that she's maybe had a croak to it, I think, right. or yeah, something it, like it that. It did say that it was raspy, I think. Raspy. Something along those lines. So okay. the first order of business is take the exact words that you give me. So if you say raspy, I'm not gonna make it really smooth, right? So that's the first step. Take, Thank you. Take what's in there. 
take what's in there and then from there build on it. So if I start with Raspy, yeah. I, okay, so Raspy is kind of like this, but I don't want her to sound like, you know, the New York person that's been smoking for too many years, you know? So we, we can't do that. And then I thought to myself, well, she's a crow. So crows have beaks and they can't really form, their lips don't really make as much sound. But then I'm like, I can't voice that. That's gonna be really annoying because she's also kind of sexy. So, and then also I thought, well, she's also an Irish goddess. So does she have an Irish accent? But I didn't really want a full on Irish accent for her because these people are millennia old. So they may not, you know, it may be as modern times go on. So I took the raspy. I took the idea of a crow, so instead of like, you know, crows are, caw, that kind of comes down, caw, you bring it into something a little more like this, and then you find something in there that's a little more penetrative, you know, it just gets right under your skin. Okay. And then, then the last part of it was to try to find some lightness to it. So if everything's like this, you listen to an eight hour audio book and you're gonna be like, okay, it was a little too much. So she has to have sensuality too. We're playing characters that aren't just two dimensional cutouts because you've written them to be three dimensional. So how do I bring in a little more softness? So the fact is you set up tent poles in the reading. So instead of always keeping her like this where it's very harsh, you can pull back a little bit, and then she's got more of a lightness, and oh, Atticus, it's more sensual. You pissed me off, and it can go into this, and then it comes back. So you have to build a little more okay. um, uh, range so that you're not just playing it all one tone. And that was the same problem I got into with Oberon from the beginning. Because in the beginning, he was very much Oberon, so excited, oh my god, which is great, but for nine books, I felt like that was gonna get on people's nerves a little bit, so I had to give him a little bit more range too. So something that started just like this, slowly started to move into more of an expression where we go up and down, and then we're here, and we're over here, and we can be really excited, and we can be really scared, and we can be really mad, you know? So something <laughs> that can cover a, a wider range of emotions than just that one raspy or gravelly or whatever it is, but you use that as the starting point. Does that make sense? It totally does, and I yeah. wanted to ask you about that because I occasionally get uh, some letters from folks asking me about the voice change between book three and four. Right, because he did go through a change. It, it, yeah, he did go sure. through a change there, and uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, I, I heard your, exp your, your explanation for it. I'm like, that makes total sense, and so I wanted folks to kind of hear that. Mm -hmm. So he starts out the very excited version that you yeah. were just talking Everything. about. Everything, this way, oh my god, god. How about it? How about it? Throw, yeah. throw the ball. Oh yeah. my, you know, very excited Score. about it. Give me the sausage. Right. And, and then uh, he gets a, a lot more range to him and, and there was a reason for that shift in, in your mind, yeah. uh, keeping in mind also that there is, uh, between Tricked and Trapped, there's also a 12 year span. That was my- Which he's, he is very much growing. That was my and, rationalization and, and, for the whole thing. Yeah, and he's adding to that his if vocabulary. If he's learning every day talking to Atticus over 12 years, his vocabulary is gonna change greatly from when he first started out. And so some of that maturity can come through in the development of his voice. Yeah. So that, and I'm very conscious of that in the books that if there's time change we don't sound the same I if you look listen back to me when I first started my voice narrating voice sounds very much different than it does now well I was thinking about rock rock stars right yeah Robert Plant whose voice aged obviously right, right? And it and it didn't become like less worthy or anything like that it just it just mellowed it changed because right. of age and and so that's that's something that happens to everybody their voices change over time my my one thing in recording is I'm always want to be true to the book I'm reading so if it's a series and a voice I did for the first book doesn't quite sit right with me for the fourth book, I'll change it. Because that's what serves the book the best for this book. You know what I mean? There's gonna be changes along the way. And as long as it serves the story of, that I'm actually telling, then that's my own goal. Okay. Yeah, I choked up, I need cool. beer. <laughs> In this particular time period that we're living yeah. in right now, is the development of the ebook platform and the audio platform, right. where you could do things that uh, weren't basically possible before. Well, we you see would... now audio-only productions where authors are writing specifically Audible originals, things like that, that mm -hmm. are just for audio only. 
Okay, so so that again, that is something that has developed, you know, in the past ten years or so, mm -hmm. and it, it wasn't there before. And so as I'm going through, you know, writing the the, the novels, mm -hmm. I'm also thinking about, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could tell this story here? That's a little bit of a sidebar, right. but Maybe still part contributes. Of the main, yeah, yeah. And and so I got to do those. I got to do those novellas that yeah. develop things off the side that that weren't necessarily. Um, the, you know, they were stories in themselves, but also contributed to it the It would have been narrative. too much of an offshoot if you'd done it in a novel, where people yeah. are like, what's he doing way over here? And so it was a way to kind of tell those, and tie up a lot of those loose little ends, too. Exactly. Absolutely. So what's next? What are you going to do? Well, I mean, I know that you've got something with Miss uh, Delilah. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Delilah Dawson and I yeah. are writing uh, a series of books that are very comedic fantasy, making fun of epic fantasy tropes. The right. first one's called Kill the Farm Boy. Yeah. And uh, that's coming out in July, right. and that's making fun of uh, the, you know the chosen one narrative uh, quite a bit. Right. But then we also have No Country for Old Gnomes and The Princess Beard coming after that, which we're writing right now. Right. And then I also have an epic fantasy series called uh, The Seven Kennings, and the first book of that is Plague of Giants. Plague which of you Giants with yeah. XC Sands. So my question is, given that you have several series, are you actually writing right now while yeah. we're talking in your head? Are you creating? Because there's no way that you can write this much. There was a little thing you said, you put a bug in my ear about a possible another Oberon's meaty mysteries. Now we've done the two, the squirrel on the train was the most recent and um, uh, the purloined, purloined poodle. poodle was yeah. the first one. So is there a chance that we might get another one? Yes, okay. there is. Um, I'm going, I've already started to write it. Oh, yay! Bit. Yeah, right. I have to do some more research on it to make sure it sweet. works. That was a real sweet. But yeah, we'll, we'll be doing that. Um, the, uh, a mystery told from the point of view of Oberon, and yeah. um, I'm, I'm working on it now, uh, along with you know the other Things that I'm working Juggling. on. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and uh, it, it's already a lot of fun. It takes place after the events of Scourged, and okay. I did not. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I didn't anticipate it happening. It just sort of it naturally just... grew from, you know. Do you find that those are the projects you tend to finish out? The ones that just kind of, like, that happen organically in that way. That you didn't plan. It wasn't like you're sitting at home, like I'm going to do another Oberon's Meaty Mysteries, but then you just found yourself writing it. Does that happen often, or is that kind of a rare thing? Yeah, uh, it, it, the the things that you get excited about yeah. and don't, you know, they won't leave you alone. That's yeah. the ones you got to finish. Keep with. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And, and so the, I'm excited to, to work on that and uh, work on additional things with Delilah and then continue uh -huh. to work on the, the seven kennings. The seven kennings. Yeah. yeah. Well, cheers, man. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. Well, thank you for, for scourged and for ten years. Yes. Thank you the so best. much for for voicing the the most amazing audio. It was my pleasure. <laughs> thank you for writing you. Yeah. <laughs>